So here's the uh, plaster I poured in. Well, here's the plaster that I poured into the mold. Um, I made this little dam around it so that uh, I could just build up the plaster and uh, you know sort of cap it off. Then whenever I'm finished with this and the plaster is all set, I can flip it over, remove all the clay, and then uh, I'll set it up with something called uh, release agent and pour the epoxy in and then I'm done. So yeah, pretty cool. Hi guys, so a number of things went wrong with uh, my little plaster uh, assembly of the, the O-ring uh, that I was putting between the two uh, halves of the, the infinity mirror. Uh, what I didn't take into account was, you know what, plaster is very porous and when you put epoxy in there, it doesn't really matter how much uh, friggin mold separator you use, it just goes in there and it sticks and it's horrible. Uh, so, and also, I learned another valuable lesson. Don't use old two-part or resin epoxy stuff because it'll actually turn into foam rubber. <laughs> that was a little embarrassing. Uh, so anyway, uh, what I ended up with, I tried to color it black so that I wouldn't have any light seepage and whatnot, but it, it didn't work out. So what I ended up with is uh, this weird gummy crappy substance that was actually stuck in the plaster mold, um, which wasn't very good. So, oh yes, and I ended up destroying the uh, really nice, precise um, uh, clay ring that I had made that was actually built to the mirror's uh, specifications, sculpted to the mirror's specifications. So, what I ended up doing was, after I got all of the, the gummy epoxy crap out of there, I tried to seal it again with this uh, Krylon... Uh, mold separator and I have some stuff called body double which is essentially silicone it's silicone rubber and I poured that into here like so I poured it in it's that's another two-part uh, mixture but uh, the great thing about silicone it's really really durable and it doesn't stick so well to different things so here we go when I was finished pouring the silicone in there I was able to just sort of peel it out and I have this little guy here which is awesome and I can just discard this. I, I don't need this stuff anymore. So then what I did was to make sure uh, this is actually a really good thing but it's it's too rubbery, it's too flexible. I need the uh, the infinity rear to be nice and rigid. Uh, I'm, and, and this won't stick to the glass at all. It barely, it doesn't really stick to anything. It's, it's really nice stuff. So, what I did was, I created another plaster cast, okay, but what I did was, I put this down on my block, and I uh, sprayed it with Krylon and Madness, and then I poured a bunch of body double on top of it, okay? So I ended up with, you know, sort of silicone embedded in silicone. But since I used the uh, the Krylon stuff properly, I was able to just sort of peel this apart and pull it out. Great thing about that is, now, oh yeah, I also poured a whole bunch of plaster on top of that while it was curing uh, to give my mold some support. If I can put it in properly, I'll show you. There we go. To give it some support so, you know, it doesn't flex or anything when I'm doing stuff with it. Then I went out and I got some nice five minute, five minute epoxy that you will probably recognize from my uh, uh, styrofoam plane adventures. And I poured that into here and I made a really nice uh, translucent ring, uh, which turned out great. So I mounted everything together and I will show you what that looks like in another video. Um, next I'm going to be working with some stuff called uh, Shift Brights which uh, essentially it's a multicolor LED that you can code uh, using an Arduino or, or some sort of a some sort of a you know a programmable chip um, to basically make any color you want based on different things. I have mine rigged up so that it reads uh, potentiometers so I'll go through the code on how I did that 
and uh, I'll also go through the electronic setup of, of what that looks like and what that means. Yeah.